Time now for Worldview, and let's go to foreign correspondent Marcus Moore, my dear friend, and our London Bureau for the latest international headlines. Marcus, I was so excited to hear I'd be talking to you. Let's start in Ukraine, where the Russian Wagner mercenary group is claiming victory in the Battle of Bakhmut, but Ukraine is denying those claims, doubling down on defending the key city. What's at stake? Where does this all stand? Yeah, hey, Janae, good to be with you. The, the eastern Ukrainian city has been the scene of intense battles for months now. Wagner Group says that taking it would allow Russian forces to push deeper into the region as they aim to take control of all of the Donbass in the east. But Western officials say if Russia were to take this city, that it would offer little, uh, if any, strategic value in the broader war that's been underway now for well over a year. Ukraine's President Zelensky said that the defenders there are, who are fighting will not retreat. And also, um, our James Longman is in the region, and he just filed a report just recently saying that he has seen tanks and armored vehicles rushing to uh, Bakhmut. So this is certainly a, a development we will continue uh, to follow, and, uh, and, and certainly uh, a lot left to happen there. Also, another story that we're following uh, this morning are really astonishing pictures out of Georgia this morning. Take a look at this. Uh, angry protest happening in the capital, Tbilisi, over what is being called the, the foreign agent bill. This is a draft law that would require non-governmental businesses and media organizations to register as foreign agents or face a fine if they have re received more than 20 percent of their funding from outside the country. Now, critics say it is a move simply to clamp down on dissent and opposition in the country. Georgia's prime minister says it is well within European standards. But the president, uh, Salome uh, Zorovichvili, uh, has vowed to veto the measure if it crosses her desk. Uh, Janae, Russia enacted a very similar law back in 2012. And on this International Women's Day, The Economist is out with its newest glass ceiling index, which uh, it says measures the role and influence of women in the global workforce. And it ranks 29 mostly rich countries for their performance in gender pay gap, uh, parental leave, and representation in senior management roles, among other metrics. Now, the United States uh, ranks 19th in this list. South Korea and Japan finishing the list at the bottom. And in the top four spots, here they are, uh, Iceland, Sweden, Finland, and Norway, respectively. And then you see Portugal there in, in number five. So uh, a lot of work left to be done in a number of countries across the globe. But uh, Janae, on this International Women's Day, um, I just want to wish you and all of our wonderful women here at ABC News a wonderful day. And thank you for your you know, your wonderful contributions, not only to the workplace, uh, but outside of it, which is perhaps more important. So, Marcus, you were so day. sweet. I was in here shimmy and taking all that in because to measure <laughs> the impact of women, I don't know if we've got the time and space. Marcus Moore, thank sister. you so much. It is so great right. to see you. Keep doing your thing over there. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.